leave the room for one minute. Picture this, an occupied land overrun with foreign sailors. The sailors, originally sent there to protect the people, instead get drunk and pick fights with the people. In come five martial arts masters, who decide the only way to protect themselves is to unite and train together to develop the world's first mixed martial arts. Sounds like something out of a movie, right? Well, it is in fact the very real history of Kajukembo. Mm, kind of. In this video, we're going to talk about Kajukembo, a style very near and dear to my heart, but with which I have some pretty big issues. We're going to talk about its history, what it is, and its training philosophies to determine if this is a brutally effective self-defense system or just another case of Bullshito wrapped in a power fantasy. Before we get started, make sure to like this video, turn on your notifications, and subscribe so you never miss a new video. And then go down to the comment section and let me know your opinion of Kajukembo. So the basic story is pretty much true. Kajukembo was founded in 1940s Hawaii by a group of locals who wanted to protect themselves against the drunk, aggressive Navy sailors. But these martial arts masters are not what you're probably picturing. Instead, these were young men aged 20 to 25 who, while they were actual martial artists, were also as aggressive and as drunk as the sailors they were trying to fight against. That doesn't mean their hearts were in the right place, that's just the truth of the situation. Furthermore, despite founding something called the Black Belt Society, most of these guys were actually brown belts or training in a system that didn't use belts at all. In other words, sometimes a legend is pretty much that. But legend or not, the fact remains these five men came together and combined their various martial arts backgrounds to find the most effective way to fight back against their bigger, stronger, and more heavily armed US Navy opponents. While the name wouldn't be formally used for several more years, what they came up with was Kajukembo. Combining elements of Tang Sudo Karate, Judo and Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Karaho Kempo, which would later on spawn American Kempo, yes, that American Kempo, more on that later, boxing, and a healthy spackling of Kung Fu and Filipino martial arts, Kaiju Kempo was designed to be a brutally effective street fighting system, whose techniques and curriculum were determined not by what worked in the mat or in theory, but instead in the bar and on the streets. So with all that background information, it would be natural and even somewhat correct to say that Kaiju Kempo was the world's first mixed martial art, a title which often goes to her little sister Jeet Kune Do, but Kaiju Kempo was founded at least 15 years before JKD, and time is linear, so suck it. But even with that in mind, and by the way, this is gonna be a totally unrelated rant, so if you don't wanna hear it, skip ahead to right here. Even with that in mind, saying that Kaiju Kempo is the first mixed martial art is only kind of true if you don't study your history, because yes, Kaiju Kembo did mix together techniques from various other martial arts to form Kaiju Kembo, but so did Okinawan Karate when it combined with Japanese Jiu Jitsu to become what we call Karate today. And various regional Thai martial arts formed together into what we call Muay Thai right now. And we wouldn't say that Karate or Muay Thai are a mixed martial art. Even going all the way back to the Greco-Roman days, wrestling, what we call wrestling today, also looked a lot more like mixed martial arts because again, they combined striking, clinching, and grappling. So it's really kind of a dumb question to ask what the first mixed martial art was because they all kind of were. The real question is, what was the first pure martial art? But I digress, because whether Kaju Kembo or Jeet Kune Do or Taekwondo whatever was the first mixed martial art is a totally irrelevant argument and one best had down in my comment section. The fact remains, Kaju Kembo was founded by mixing together techniques from various other martial arts. So what does Kaju Kembo look like? How is Kaju Kembo different from karate, or judo, or boxing, or even American Kempo? Well, the truth is, it's not really all that different. And it is very different. Kaju Kembo is entirely individually based. You could have one Kaju black belt, who's the most point fightery point fighter who ever point fighted, another one who looks like an Escrimador high on Adderall, and a completely different one who looks like the most heavy punching MMA fighter of all time. The style is completely based on the individual. But that being said, I have identified three training philosophies that are uniform across all Kaju Kembo schools, regardless of how they train. And we're gonna go over those right now. Philosophy number one, aggression first, ask questions later. Because these techniques are designed to hurt your opponent and hurt him bad. Very rarely will you see a technique that doesn't end in a bone break or a judo throw where he lands on his head or straight up punch to the boys. And this makes sense 
when you remember that Kajikenpo was founded by guys who wanted to win the sport of street fighting. In other words, despite its best efforts, Kajikenpo is not a self-defense system. It's a street fighting system. Now, whether you agree with me or not, I'm right. Because self-defense training should look very different from fight training. Instead of focusing on punching to the face, kicking to the groin, ripping someone's eyes out, self-defense training is a lot more about learning to de-escalate and negotiate and avoid situations. They do go hand in hand and one can turn into the other, but they are very different things to practice. And the only way to win a street fight is to maim or cripple your opponent, or worse. Self-defense notwithstanding, in terms of fighting, Kaju Kembo is mostly focused on aggression, aggressive forward moving pressure. If you can get your opponent on the back foot and wail some heavy punches on him or take him to the ground and stomp on his head and kick him in the ribs, that's what you're going to do. That is the main aim of Kaju Kembo. And this is a really good thing, but it can also be a very bad thing. Because if you're training realistically and putting pressure on your opponent while they're trying to do the same to you, then you're going to be one dangerous fighter. But if you take away that all important realistic portion of it, suddenly you're doing something that looks a lot less like fighting and a lot more like fight choreography. Don't get me wrong, any one of these individual movements can hurt pretty bad because it turns out if you swing your hand fast at someone's face, it will hurt. Everything works in a vacuum. The question is, can you make it work in the real world? TLDR, if you're training something that you can't pull off in a fight or in sparring or even against moderate resistance, you're not training something, you're rehearsing something. But the same thing that can make Kajikembo bad for fighting makes it very good for self-defense. Confused yet? In terms of self-defense, your appearance matters a lot more than your ability. Again, if you walk around looking like you're the most accomplished, aggressive street fighter on the planet, people are unlikely to want to mess with you. But if you walk around with your head down, shoulders hunched forward, looking like a scared bunny, then people are going to treat you like that as well even if you actually are one of the best fighters on the planet. Fact is, if you train in a martial art that is absolute bullshit, but it gives you the confidence to walk from your house to your car to your workplace without looking scared, then that martial art is teaching you self-defense. But rest assured, if push comes to shove and you're in a situation where you have to defend yourself and you actually don't know how to, well, all your appearance has done is make you a pretty looking target. While we could argue that it's boxing training or MMA training or whatever that makes someone good at fighting, not Kaju Kembo, there is one contribution of Kaju Kembo that cannot be denied. The heart. The second part of Kaju Kembo's philosophy is train hard. Because if there's one thing Kaju Kembo is known for, is its intense, almost irresponsibly brutal training methods. Back in the day, this meant almost fight level sparring. Adriano Imperato, the founder, was famously quoted as saying, class isn't over until there's blood on the floor. And that translated to spar as hard as you possibly can. More often than not, with very minimal gear. But, as with anybody who only hard spars, after a while, the students stopped showing up either because they didn't want to get fucked up that bad or because they were physically too injured to train. So, wanting to remain in business, Kaju Kembo shifted away from hard sparring only to more of a hard training method. In this case, that usually manifests as yet again a scenario where the partner throws a single punch and stands still while you unload strike after strike into their body and face. And this is bad for you because now you think you're good at fighting when actually the only thing you're good at is hitting somebody while they're standing still, but it's actually very good for the person getting hit. Now, long-term health ramifications notwithstanding, if you are repeatedly getting hit in the ribs or in the stomach or even in the face, eventually you become inoculated to that pain. Eventually you learn how to turn off those pain receptors so you can march through whatever's thrown at you in sparring. This still is not the best way to train hard because earlier we were dealing with brain damage happening in one for one exchanges. I hit you, you hit me. But now we're dealing with scenarios where people are getting hurt and they're not able to defend themselves. So yet again, Kaju Kembo adapted. And these days, hard training means super intense strength and conditioning push-ups, squats, sprawls, getting your heart rate up and putting your muscles under fatigue. That's where Kaju Kembo's hard training comes from. We can go back and forth on determining if burpees and push-ups are as difficult as hard sparring, but again, really it's about talking about your goals. And if you ask me, it's more important that you have a longevity as a fighter or as a martial artist than that you learn how to walk through someone kicking you right in the temple. But I don't know, that's just me. I'm able to talk coherently. And that brings us to philosophy number three, which 
Should seem obvious based on what Kajukembo is, but it's worth talking about all the same. Any technique from any style. Kajukembo, as I said, is about adapting and stealing techniques from whatever martial arts you want. Take a throw from Judo, pull something in from Bando, take something from Capoeira. If you like it, if it works for you, take it. And that's why if you're coming to Kajukembo looking for self-defense or MMA street fighting, and you find an instructor who also likes that, then you're golden. But if you think Kajukembo is about street fighting and you find a school that's focused on sword fighting and kata, it is still equally Kajukembo, but it's not self-defense. But on the plus side, any martial arts training is better than no martial arts training. And like I said before, Kajukembo gives you a really good base in a variety of different martial arts. I've seen plenty of people who started training in Kajukembo easily transition into boxing, MMA, Tai Chi, Aikido. The wide breadth of things that are covered in a Kajukembo class means that while you might not be the master of any one thing, you're at least familiar with most things. Bottom line, if you're looking for an eclectic style with the flair of traditional martial arts that combines striking, grappling, throwing, joint locks, and weapons, Kajukembo is the way to go. And if you're training in a style that has nothing to do with Kajukembo, but your training focuses on intensity and building iron willpower and never giving up, congratulations, you're doing Kajukembo. All that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to see more great content from me, why don't you check out these videos right here? This has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you guys for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work get to be done. And I'll see you next time.